The beginning of Phase 5 is here, but did Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania live up to the hype? Hey everyone, welcome back to the Superhero Initiative. I'm David, and last night, me and Dylan watched the movie kicking off Phase 5 of the MCU, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. So before we begin the review, the way I'm going to do this is split it into categories. First, I will talk about the plot slash story, then the characters, the world building, and lastly, my overall feeling on the movie and any last thoughts I want to get out as a whole. So let's get started. And beginning with the plot, this is definitely a movie where we are jumping right into it within the first 10 to 15 minutes. We get a very short amount of time as we follow Scott on Earth and how his life has been after the blip, and then very quickly we are already in the quantum realm. I like the whole idea of how they travel to the quantum realm due to a mistake done by Cassie, and the whole idea of sending a signal to the quantum realm and how almost immediately Kang finds out and sucks them in. They make this character very mysterious and menacing, and he truly has been waiting for the one moment he could get out of the quantum realm. I love seeing the team split apart and how they interacted with new and mysterious quantum realm characters. While the first 20 minutes feels a bit slow, the plot later becomes jam-packed with action keeping you entertained the entire time. Now some of the bad things about the plot were mainly due to the movie's runtime. With it only being 2 hours and 3 minutes, the ending slash final battle sequence felt very rushed, and as great as the battle between Scott and Kang was, we only got a couple minutes of it, and it wasn't as grand as I thought it was really going to be. I was also expecting this story to use some specific characters a little better, which I'll further explain in the character section. Back to the good though, I thoroughly enjoyed the backstory between Janet and Kang, as well as how central Janet was to defeating Kang. Overall, the plot story was super entertaining, and I really enjoyed it this way. And moving towards the characters, and boy, do I have a lot to say about the characters. But getting my good out of the way, I'm just going to say it right here that Paul Rudd and Jonathan Majors, they kill it in their roles. I love Scott and Kang. Uh, obviously, Scott, super funny. He's really quirky, and he's just an awesome hero overall. And I'm really glad he gets a great dynamic with Catherine Newton as Cassie, who also did an amazing job, by the way. But Jonathan Majors, I mean, I know you've probably all heard this before. He really kills it as Kang. I'm super excited to see where his character goes. I mean, when he walks into the room as Kang in this movie, e everyone is silent. It is him speaking, he is the one. You know, he is him, right? So he's a great villain, I love him, and I'm super excited for him. But this is my biggest issue with the characters in this film, and this will probably take a, a big chunk of time here, but I just think for the amount of runtime, which as I said, was two hours and three minutes, it was jam packed with way too many characters you know we had our main characters with uh ant-man hope janet hank cassie uh i think yeah i think that's all of them uh but then we also have you know our villains kang and modok who modok i will talk about later i assure you and then we also got a bunch of quantum realm characters and so i just think that there was way too many characters that they had to talk about and uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is Bill Murray's character, which I think was Kryler or something like that. Um, and my goodness, they just completely wasted Bill Murray as a character in the MCU. I'm going to be completely honest here. He had a short, maybe two-minute clip where he was talking to Janet, Hank, and Hope, and that was it. I thought we were going to see him again later in the movie. We did not see him at all. And for Bill Murray, he's like, great actor he's super famous you'd think they'd use him much better and unfortunately he just was underutilized and i get you know he's probably not going to do too much action but i really thought they could have made him a great character and unfortunately he just was not and i think that was just due to more important characters um at the time also a bunch of quantum realm characters I honestly forgot a bunch of their names, if I'm going to be honest, because there's just way too many to balance, because we have Scott and Cassie's villain, uh, sorry, not villains, Quantum Realm characters they meet as well. Um, the only guy I remember is the Jelly guy who wants holes or something like that. He was pretty funny, but the others, you know, I somewhat remember them a little bit. They had a few standout moments, but I don't even remember their names, honestly. Um... And also, for an Ant-Man and the Wasp movie, I just think that Wasp was completely, you know, underutilized as well. I'm sure she had some 
standout moments, especially in the bar scene where they were with uh, Bill Murray's character, and also the part where Scott's fighting Kang, she shows up through that. That was pretty cool, but I just feel like she could have had a lot more. She could have maybe helped Janet a lot more. Who, speaking of Janet, Janet had a very big character role in this, which I did enjoy a lot. Um, I think, you know, she wasn't around in the first film, obviously. In the second film, she was around for only a few minutes, obviously, because she just came back from the Quantum Realm. So I'm really glad they used her a lot, especially Michelle Pfeiffer. She's a great actress, too, especially for this role. She's really great. And, and so I think I really like how she was a big part to stopping Kang. She was part of Kang's, like, backstory in the Quantum Realm. So I love that. But this is my biggest gripe, and that is Modok, okay? Modok, he is such a big character in the comics, super evil guy, and in this movie, he is the joke. He is the main guy. They keep talking about making fun of him. You know, I think pretty much everyone in the movie is like, oh my goodness, what happened to you? And it's funny, you know, everyone in my theater laughed, and I, I laughed myself, but I just feel like it's Modok, and I really want to see more of him, wanted to see more of him. And I was just hoping for something a little bit more, I guess, not for him to be the joke every single time. But at the same time, I do understand it's hard to make a character like that look normal in a live action uh, way. I think they, the MCU did the best they could with this character, um, you know, looks wise. I think they actually did a good job that way. Um, and, uh, you know, spoilers here, he does die at the end of the movie. I was hoping he didn't die so we could at least maybe see something more of him even if he was just a joke um but yeah he does die in the end so yeah those are all the characters i do think that there were some standout uh appearances but at the same time i think there was too many to balance in such a short movie all right and now world building and this can be a little bit uh, of a shorter section here but uh, we do get a little bit on earth obviously we see that Hope uh, takes Hank's company. It's like called now Pim Van Dyne Tech or something like that. Um, something along those lines. So we do get that. Probably not a building we'll see too often, but that is something that maybe we could see again. We get the return of Baskin Robbins, which is a funny little joke from uh, Scott Lang in the first film when he worked there. So yeah, that was pretty nice. A few locations on Earth. But obviously the main thing we're seeing is the Quantum Realm. And I really like how we got to see a lot more of it. A lot of new locations. We got to see how it's a full city now. That there's small villages. We got to see Keg's entire empire. It was huge. Uh, there's, It's very similar to Star Wars, which I know a lot of people said. But it maybe it reminded me of like Kang as like Darth Vader kind of. And he had all his like little stormtrooper type guys who were kind of like conducting everything. And it made me think a lot of like, uh, I guess like the Bad Batch TV show where, you know, everyone's kind of like scared of this whole empire that's going on with Kang. So yeah, I thought that was awesome. That was a great way to make the Quantum Realm feel like an unsafe place. So that was really cool. Overall, I think they did a great job expanding the Quantum Realm because Ant-Man and the Wasp, obviously, we only got a few little bits. And the first Ant-Man was, you know, barely anything in the Quantum Realm. So now we get to see there's people down there. It's a full world, and I really love that a lot. Okay, and lastly, this is my overall feelings and last-minute thoughts. I think overall, this movie is really fun. It's entertaining. And honestly, you know, it's definitely an Ant-Man film. I... Do you think that even though it was the movie kicking off Phase 5, Peyton Reed wanted something a little more high stakes than the past two Ant-Man films, this still does feel like an Ant-Man film. You're getting humor, you're getting, you know, a fun little mission, I guess, side mission kind of. But we also get the introduction of Kang, which I really like. I think that worked well, except for the fact that Kang does get defeated in the end, which was kind of an issue just because... It's Ant-Man, and considering the fact that Kang himself in the movie even said that he's defeated a d another version of Thor, it's kind of crazy that Ant-Man and the Wasp were able to defeat him. So that was a bit, you know, uh, one of my gripes I had with the film, but I guess it was all right. We needed to defeat him, obviously, and we also needed to, to introduce him. But yeah, that's okay. But I do think it still feels like an Ant-Man film, Another gripe I had with it is that it doesn't feel like a 
third Ant-Man film, considering it's ending the trilogy of Ant-Man films, I feel like, you know, not it's not too emotional for Ant-Man, and it loses the trend of every single third MCU movie has had that main character lose something. Like Spider-Man, you know, he lost everything. Captain America lost his shield in Civil War. Iron Man lost his arc reactor. So, you know, we lose that trend in this one, and I was really hoping we could see something from Ant-Man that he loses. Maybe maybe even him getting stuck in the quantum realm would have been cool uh, at the end with Hope there. That would have been really awesome, I think. Uh, overall, though, really fun and entertaining movie. I definitely think you should check it out. It's not one that you need to check out immediately, um, but definitely, I think, see it in theaters. It's really cool to see the quantum realm in theaters, and they've got some great sounds and stuff. So overall, I'm going to give it uh, probably like a 7, 7.5 out of 10. So overall, good MCU movie. I think it's much better than a lot of the stuff in Phase 4. And it gets me really excited for the future of Phase 5 and Phase 6. All right, and now for the last overall grade. So these three categories are going to be action, characters, and story. So for action, I'm going to give it an A-. minus. I think there's a lot of action in this film. It's really awesome to see Ant-Man uh, and the Wasp, and Cassie even, they go small to big, and there's a lot of cool fight scenes, especially I love the Kang versus Ant-Man fight at the very end. That was also, even with how short it was, it was really cool. Also the big war. So yeah, A- minus fits well there. For characters, I'm going to give it a B-, minus. while I do think we had some great, great characters, that we definitely needed some more time for other characters, and there was just too many that they had for such a short movie. For story overall, I'm going to give that a B plus. I think it's a fun and entertaining story, but obviously it's nothing grand. It's not Avengers Infinity War or anything like that, but it's still very fun and entertaining, and it's a great movie overall. So yeah, those are my rankings. Okay, guys, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed my review of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. We'll definitely be posting some more Ant-Man content. Tomorrow, we'll be having a ranking of all three Ant-Man films. So be sure to subscribe and stick around for that. Other than that, everyone, have a great day. And we'll see you in the next video.